We are here on the holy island of Lindisfarne, a beautiful little island off the coast of Northumberland. Today it's quiet and remote and peaceful, but 1400 years ago it was a completely different story. King Oswald and Aidan founded an Anglo-Saxon monastery here and it quickly became the centre of a really extensive cultural network. It grew and grew in power and wealth and fame until one day it was attacked by Vikings. We're here looking for the remains of the people that lived here before, during and after those Viking raids. So we know why we're here, but why did the monks who first started the monastery decide to come to this little island? Well, I think the key thing you need to remember is the monks who come here, they've come from another holy island. They've come from a, a great Irish Scottish monastery called Iona. So when they come over, they, they have that idea of, a, of an island monastery already in their heads. They come over with a new Northumbrian king. He wants to make his mark on, on the landscape and the religion of his new kingdom. So I think he's really trying to found an Iona of the East here at, at Holy Island. And it's important to understand that although the island itself is really nice, it's also just across the water from Bambra. And Bambra, we know, was one of the major royal sites of the kings of Northumberland. So it was just part of a kind of wider landscape and they're really keen in this period on coastal sites, particularly because in, in, in a world where people are moving around on horse and on foot up and down muddy roads, the quickest way to move north and south is by using the sea. And we have lots of references in people like Bede to saints and kings using those sea roads to move up and down within England and also over to the continent. So there's, there's good practical reasons why you want to be here. And also there's this idea that they're echoing Iona, where they originally came from. To me, being here, it feels like a very special place. It's very atmospheric. Are there reasons that are spiritual or symbolic as to why they would have really liked these coastal locations as well? Yeah, I, I think there's that sense of being on the edge of the world mm -hmm. and, and kind of closer to, to the unknown, to, to the great ocean. Uh, in, in, in Particularly in Lindisfarne's case, where you've got a, a tidal island, there's that sense of, of, of you know, the story from Exodus in the Bible with the parting of the Red Sea. Of course, here that's reenacted twice a day with, with the tides coming coming away and coming back together again. Also, in, when you read the saints' lives and you read what Bede talks about, they, they tell these stories about the, 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 the mystical power of the sea. It's, the sea was somewhere where God could make himself manifest. So there's stories about seals, pregnant seals, swimming around the island who refuse to give birth until Cuthbert blesses them. There's a story which uh, set in Coldingham, a bit further up the coast, where Cuthbert had spent hours in prayer in the sea, and then otters come out and dry his feet. And when Cuthbert's over on the Farn Island, and there's stories about how wood is miraculously drawn up to the island uh, by, by the tide so he can, build, he can build little structures. So the sea is somewhere where you're very close to God. Uh, and I said there's lots of kind of biblical symbolism there as well. So it's not just about the practical side, it's about that, that broader kind of religious, ritual, mythological aspect to the ocean. So this is our fourth season of excavation here, investigating the site of the monks who loved this island site, this coastal monastery. And we're now just a couple of days in to our latest round of excavation. Are there any really key archaeological finds that we've been discovering that can help tell us a little bit more about why the coast was so important to the monks and why this location was so important to the monks who were here? Somewhere like Holy Island, you've got amazing economic resources. You've got the fish that swim in the sea, you've got the sea seabirds, you've got the seals, there's lots of things people can do to feed themselves by using maritime resources and we're starting to find that in the archaeology. So last year we found seal bones, they're clearly eating seal and we, we know from uh, some, some of the early saints lives set in Iona that also the monks Iona also ate a lot of seal. There's probably a lot of fat, very high calorific content in a, in a seal. Yeah, I'm not sure if I want to know what they taste like, but yeah, I'm sure fishy. they should be, yeah, fishy and be fatty. really good for you if you're living <laughs> somewhere so remote. So we found those. We found, we're finding increasing quantities of shellfish, so lots of oysters. So they're having quite a nice seafood diet. So oysters, whelks, cockles, almost anything which you can get from the, from the tidal zone. Um, they're probably making the most of other resources as well. Uh, they're probably burning sea 
seaweed to make fertilizer. We know that some of the stone which they've used in our building clearly came from the beach because it's riddled with little holes, um, kind of chewed by little maritime creatures, so they're, they're taking rocks off the beach. And finally, we've talked about these quartz pebbles which we found everywhere with the burials. Now those seem to be beach rolled pebbles. They must have come from a beach. Now whether they're from here, or whether they're from another island or another part of the coast nearby, we're not quite sure yet. But again, they're part of that, that kind of harvesting of, of what, what, what's been provided in, in the immediate surrounding area. Yeah, we heard from some of our team that who went out looking for the white quartz pebbles that they didn't find them on high up on the shoreline. They only could find a few when the tide was really quite far out. So you can imagine maybe people waiting for low tides. And I think that's probably part of the process, actually. It, it kind of added, added the symbolic weight when you put it on the grave. They weren't things you just picked up anywhere. You had to really try hard to find these things. Yeah, so we've got food in the seal bones. We've got shells and oysters as well that they would have been eating and perhaps maybe using some of the oyster shells for other reasons and the seaweed. But then also more symbolic items like the white quartz pebbles. And I think there are also a couple we've just found, I've heard from the finds room, that they've just found a few more of those St Cuthbert's beads as well. Yeah, these are lovely little fossils which are mainly found on the beaches here. And we found some in the past in, in some of the grave fills. And, and I think in the same way now, people go down to the beach with their kids and try and find these fossils. I think people living here 1,500 years ago, they just still pick them up and wondered what they are. And the nice thing is they have this mythology and folklore attached to them that they, they were they were kind of beads of, of, of St Cuthbert. Yeah, so, well, they use them in rosaries or something like that. Yeah, so again, another little example of people just yeah. like modern visitors do, mooching around on the beaches, picking things up which look interesting, yeah. then bringing them back as souvenirs. So we're really starting to see how the sort of coastal environment and being on a island really pervaded all aspects of the life of this monastery during their life but also ultimately when the monastery came to the end and the Vikings would have come in across the sea and they would have been able to see those ships flags coming in over the horizon so it would have been this place that maybe gave but also in the end ultimately took away from the monks who lived here. Absolutely the North Sea would have governed everything when you live somewhere like here for good and for bad. Fantastic. Well, we've only been here for a couple of days. It's just the start of our dig and we've got plenty more time to see what else we find over the next two weeks. Wish us luck. Good morning and things. What a lovely day it is today. La 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 la. I like jelly.